Hello, Curtis Boggs here. Um, I'm a DP working out of Virginia Beach. Uh, I don't normally do a lot of gear reviews and things like that, but um, I have something that I'm kind of excited about and uh, I thought that I would do a little intro video and kind of let you see what's going on up to this point. So DZO Film has been doing some really good stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people are, are big fans of their primes. Um, I don't own a set of their primes, but uh, you know I've, I've used them, they're pretty nice too. So here's the thing, DZO decided they're gonna do a two times anamorphic lens. Um, and I, I have to tell you right off the bat that uh, I'm pretty excited about these. I'm, I, I like these. Uh, at least what they've done so far. So this is the DZO Pavo anamorphic, two times anamorphic. Um, they're fairly compact. Uh, they're not big, super heavy. They're, they're very reasonable size, um, very well made. You know, uh, they have plenty of experience making, you know, their housings and stuff like this, and, and they didn't sacrifice anything on these. Um, very well made, of course, they're all you know, they're all machined aluminum, um, 95 millimeter front. Um, and like I said, not, not real heavy, uh, PL mount. And I, I understand that these are going to be, um, you know, eventually these are going to be available in, um, an EF mount. I think they're going to be a changeable mount, uh, that I'm not hundred percent sure on yet. Um, and the set that I have here are prototypes. So this is not the final design. Uh, they are actually gonna go back and tweak on these. There's a couple of things they're gonna change in the, um, in the makeup of the, uh, you know, the glass. So it's, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna work on, on distortion and a couple of other things as far as I understand. Um, so yeah, pretty excited about these. So a couple little details. Um, I went out and shot a little bit of stuff. I shot some stuff and some test things in the studio here. And um, unfortunately, uh, my model wasn't available for the studio stuff. So you're going to have to look at my ugly mug. Um, but you'll get an idea of, you know, what these lenses generally are like and what the book is like and fall off and stuff like that. I also went out and shot a little fashion thing on the beach. Nothing real fancy, you know, but it'll give you an idea of, um, of just how beautiful, you know, images from these, these lenses can, can be. These are all prototypes. Um, so keep that in mind when you're looking at this footage, you know, and, and looking at this video. Um, you know, DZO is going back and they are gonna work on some of these details. They create a pretty beautiful image. At, at least I like them quite a bit. Wide open at T 2.1, um, they're pretty soft. You know, they're they're, um, you know, they're they're usable at that point. Um, I had a tendency to shoot them somewhere around T four. Um, you know, T four. What you had in focus it, uh, becomes very nice and sharp, very clean, um, but then you still get that beautiful fall off and that beautiful bokeh. Onto the anamorphic streaks and the anamorphic flares. Um, they do have an anamorphic flare, uh, but extremely subdued. So it, it took, as you'll see in the, in the studio test, you know, with the flashlight, you know, it, it took a pretty hard light source uh, to get any kind of a, a streak flare out of these. Um, and the set that I have here is, is a blue flare. 
And I understand they're going to do blue, and they're also going to do uh, a neutral. Um, so I, me personally, I don't like big flares, you know, big streaks from anamorphic lenses. I think it's very distracting. Um, you know, especially if I'm using these in a narrative situation, you know, I, I, I want that focus fall off. I want to separate my subject from the background. And, and that's the thing that I go after anamorphic um, or even, even my primes, like uh, I'm shooting this on, a, uh, on one of my Irix uh, primes, which I absolutely love. And, and it's because of the separation. You can see how much separation I have here. You know, it's nice focus fall off. Uh, separates subject from the background and for me that's the big thing with anamorphic you know all of that chaotic waterfall bokeh that just falls apart in the background and, and you know the image just falls apart um, but that's what I love about anamorphic is the fact that whatever I'm whatever my subject is whatever I'm focused on is nice and sharp and clean and that background falls off so hard, you know, it, it gives depth. It, it, it gives me that, you know, more of a 3D look from a 2D medium. medium. So uh, I think these lenses do that fairly well. Um, if they were a little bit sharper, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be upset by that. Um, it's always easier, well, it's always possible, you know, if you have a, a lens that's too sharp, you can put filtration in it and soften it up. If you have a soft lens, you have a soft lens. There's no place to go from there. So uh, I don't mind overly sharp lenses because that, that's why we have filtration and there's little things that go in a matte box that hold filters. You know, it's, um, it's easy enough to soften up a lens if you need to. Um, so that being said, you know, I'll circle back to build quality. The, uh, you know, the, the T-stop ring and focus ring on these things are just absolutely buttery smooth. Just enough resistance to be nice and stay where they're supposed to be. And, you know, and, and loose enough to just, they're, they're just, they're just buttery smooth. They're, they're very nice. Size-wise, like I said, these are, uh, these are pretty reasonable. I mean, this is 75. This is a two times anamorphic 75. Um, they did cover 8K um, 6.5 six on the Raptor, on my Raptor. Um, so you'll see the footage, the footage that I shot, I shot at, uh, I shot at 8K on my Raptor. Um, pretty impressive set of lenses. Um, so that's all I got for now. Um, just briefly, I want to thank, uh, you know, my buddy Joe at Film Tools, um, who arranged for me to, to get this set of uh, uh, prototype lenses to try out for a couple of days. Um, thanks a lot, Film Tools. Um, I mean, you guys rock, Film Tools. Um, you know, Joe's my favorite guy. Um, you know, that, uh, that being said, I, I think when these come back around, you know, when they when they do their little tune-up on them and they come back out, I think there's going to be a very nice set of lenses. Um, my understanding is pricing is going to be somewhere under $6,000 a piece and maybe even less than that. Um, they're not really sure yet. They're still kind of working on where their pricing is going to be. Uh, anyway, uh, again, Curtis Boggs, I appreciate your time. Peace out.